first crown You're my help and my defender You're my savior and my friend By your grace I live and breathe to worship We're doing an exciting series called Ministering, Healing and Deliverance, where our goal is to equip every believer to do the Father's works, to minister healing and deliverance, work miracle signs and wonders. And this is what the Lord Jesus wants. He wants every one of His people to be equipped to go forth in His name and in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring healing and deliverance to a hurting world and to point them to him so that the world may see and know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Greetings and thank you for tuning in to Living Strong. Uh, it's our joy and delight to come your way and bring God's word to you. Uh, we also appreciate those who have uh, uh, responded to um, the messages and have sent us their emails. We appreciate your testimonies. 
Uh, we also want to thank those who are making use of the uh, free resource that we're making available. Uh, this entire teaching is available in printed form as a book uh, called uh, Ministering, Healing and Deliverance. Uh, this is available as a PDF document that you could download from our uh, church website. Or if you would like to have a printed copy, uh, you could email us your postal address and we'll be happy to send a free printed copy to you. Uh, and, and you can use that in, in your study as we go through uh, uh, these various topics on ministering, healing, and deliverance. We'd encourage you to get other people to watch the program, those who need healing and deliverance in their lives, or those who would like to be equipped to minister healing and deliverance. Get them to watch the program. Just call them, let them know uh, this program is on and that uh, Living Strong is on and the channel that you're watching in so they could uh, tune in and uh, be equipped to minister healing and deliverance. Uh, we started talking about the basis for ministering healing and deliverance last week, and uh, we uh, discussed the first two aspects of this. We talked about God's nature being uh, the, first base, the first reason, the first foundation stone, because it is God who is the healer, God is the deliverer, and so because of that, we can step out and, and, and uh, pray and minister healing and deliverance. Secondly, we talked about the cross of Jesus Christ, how that the cross, on the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ provided for our healing. When he took upon himself all our sicknesses and diseases, uh, he bore them in his own body on the cross so that we could be healed, so that we could walk in health and healing. We also saw that through the blood that he shed on the cross, he has redeemed us from every uh, uh, demonic access into our lives, and he has set us up with a covenant with God, and part of that covenant with God is healing. Healing is part of that covenant, and so therefore we can, are entitled to it. We can receive it. Uh, it's uh, the children's bread. It's what God provides for those who are in covenant with him. So that's the second basis, the cross of Jesus Christ. It's because of that finished work that we can tell people, yes, God can heal you. God wants to heal you. God desires to heal you. It's God's will to heal you. So let's pray for it. Let's press in uh, to receive healing, uh, to receive deliverance uh, through whichever way God wants to bring it into our lives. The third uh, basis that we will talk about, we'll establish a few more uh, on the program today, uh, on the basis on which we can minister healing uh, into people's lives. The third one we want to talk about is the Word of God. That because of what God has put in His Word, because of the promises in His Word, we can minister healing and deliverance. There's one thing that we really need to understand, and that is God works by His Word. The power of God is released in His Word. Every promise is a carrier of, of God's power, uh, intended to be released in our lives, intended to work in our lives. You know, when God created, when God created things, He created them by the power of His Word. The Bible tells us in Psalm 33, verses 6 and verse 9, it says that by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spoke and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast. That is, by his word, all these things were done. And when he spoke, these things were established. Uh, and so God works by his word and even healing, he releases it through his word. Psalm 107 and verse 20 says uh, that when God's people were in distress, they cried out to him. And this verse says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So how did God heal them? He sent his word. His word carried his healing power. So every promise of God for healing carries the healing power of God um, uh, uh, and it brings healing into our lives. Uh, the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 22, has this wonderful statement. It says there, My son, attend to my words, incline the ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are health to those who find them, for they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. God is saying, my word is life, and my word is health healing to their entire body. It's the same Hebrew word, Rapha or Rafe, 
which God said, used when he, for his own covenant name. He said, I am the Lord, your healer. He used that same word, Rafa. And now he's saying his word is Rafa. His word is healing to our entire body. So our entire body is touched with healing power as we receive the word of God. And that word works powerfully in our lives. So this is a very important basis on which we can receive healing. That as we meditate in that word, as we feed our spirit with the word of God uh, on healing and read those promises on healing, his word, uh, healing promises, carries his healing power that affects our whole body. He said, my word is healing. It's medicine to your whole body. So as just by meditating in that word, by receiving that word and allowing that word to build faith in our hearts, his word can bring healing to our entire body from every sickness and every disease. The next important basis for us to minister healing and deliverance is the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit's power. The power of the Holy Spirit, uh, it, it brings healing, it brings deliverance uh, to those of us who are oppressed. And Jesus said in Luke the fourth chapter, Verses 17 to 19, he said, The Spirit of God is upon me, for God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to those that are blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed or those who are bruised. So because or by the anointing of God's Holy Spirit, he's saying blind eyes will open, Broken hearts will be healed, and those who are oppressed uh, will be set free. So it's the power of God's Spirit that does this work and brings healing. Uh, in Acts 10, in verse 38, the Bible says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed to the devil, for God was with him. Because of the anointing of God's Spirit, he went about doing good and healing the people. It's the anointing of God, the Spirit's power that brings healing, that brings deliverance, uh, that removes sicknesses and diseases. Jesus said this in Matthew 12 and verse 28. Uh, he said, if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out devils, then the kingdom of God has come to you. So it's by the Spirit that devils are cast out, by the power of God's Spirit, that even demons are cast out. So the reason we can minister healing and deliverance is because that same anointing, the same presence and power of the Holy Spirit that was on Jesus, that flowed through Jesus, that was released through Jesus to heal the people, that same anointing now is available to us to flow through us and bring healing and deliverance to people. Jesus said in Acts 1 and verse 8, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. So really he's, he's, he's saying, look, you're going to have the same power that was on me, the same anointing of the Holy Spirit flowing through me will now flow through you and you will be able to do the same things that uh, he was doing. So that's another basis why we can go to people and say, look, I can pray for you. Uh, I, I can minister healing and deliverance to you because of the power of the Holy Spirit upon our lives and flowing through our lives. Even at the end of this program today, we're going to pray. And as we pray together, we will believe for the power of the Holy Spirit to touch your life. That the power of God will touch your life, bring healing and bring deliverance from every sickness, every disease, every work of the devil. We'll believe that because that's available to us. It's real. It's the truth. It's the Word of God made available to us. Another important basis for ministering healing and deliverance is the name of Jesus. You know, Jesus has given us his name to use to do what he would do if he were here himself. When he gave us the right to use his name, he was really giving us the power of attorney. That means the power of delegated power, delegated authority, the right to do the things he would do if he were here and do it in his name. That means in his behalf, representing him, doing what he would himself do. So he has given us that delegated authority or the right to use his name. In Mark 16, verses 17 and 18, he said, These signs will follow those who believe. In my name, or using my name, they will cast out devils. And then he continues, they will lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. So really, Jesus wants us to use his name, in my name. They will do these things. So when we use the name of Jesus, 
We are standing in his place, we are representing him, and we are acting in his behalf. Now, obviously, we use his name to do the things he would do if he were here present. What did, he, what did Jesus do when he was present here? When sick people came to him in faith, he healed them. When there were people who were demon-possessed and, uh, and troubled, he delivered them. And so now he says that those who believe in him, that is you and I, will use his name, stand in his place, act on his behalf, and do the things that he would want done if he were here, here present. And so that's why we can minister healing and deliverance because he's given us the right to use his name and do it the way and do the things he would want done and to do it the way he would do it uh, as we minister to the sick. Another important basis for ministering healing and deliverance is our faith in God. You know, God's given us this capacity to have faith. And when we have faith, nothing, he said, would be impossible. And it is through faith that we can receive healing and we can receive deliverance for our own lives. And through faith, we can also minister to people for them to receive healing and to, for them to receive deliverance. So when we have faith in God, we can minister healing and deliverance. You know, in Matthew 17, uh, verses 19 to 21, uh, there was a situation there where a man brought his son who was uh, troubled by devils. He brought him to the disciples of Jesus. They couldn't help him. Uh, but later on, Jesus came. Uh, he cast the devil out and he set the boy free. And then his disciples came to him and said, Lord, why could we not cast the devil out? Why could we not do it? And he responded with this one reason. He said, because of your unbelief. So what was the real reason? He said, because of your unbelief. He didn't say it wasn't God's will to deliver the boy. He didn't say God wanted the boy to be that, remain that way. That was not the reason. The reason was because of your unbelief. And then he went on to give them the promise of faith. He said, if you have faith, even as a grain of mustard seed, you could tell any mountain to move, it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. Meaning, look, this situation could have been addressed, but all, you needed, all it needed was that, that mustard seed of faith, that faith in God that can move this thing out of the way. So when we have faith in God, we can believe God to move sicknesses and diseases and uh, all kinds of demonic works to move them out of the way. So we minister. As we minister to people, we minister by faith uh, in the Lord. Uh, you know, there was a time when Peter and John in Acts chapter 3 were going into the temple for prayer and they saw this lame man. He'd been lame from the time of his birth for 40 years and he spent much of his life sitting there at the temple gate begging for money. Uh, and Peter and John, as they saw this man, Peter said, look upon us, look here. So the man looked uh, towards them expecting to receive some money from them. And Peter says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. So there he was using the name, was acting on behalf of Jesus. He said, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And the Bible says immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he stood up and he ran into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. Now, all the people were amazed and they came running towards Peter and John thinking that they were, you know, some, uh, uh, some great men, some men who were, had great power and great holiness. And here's what Peter says to them in Acts 3 and verse 16. He says, His name, through faith in His name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which was given to us from God has made this man perfectly whole. So what is Peter saying? How did they work this healing? It was faith in their hearts and faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith given to them from God that brought about this healing. So when we have faith in God, it's the, it's the basis because we believe, because we have faith, because we know that God can do everything and nothing is impossible to Him. Because of that faith, we step out and we reach out to minister healing and deliverance. And it's by faith and through faith that we can see people healed and delivered. And two more reasons on, two, on the basis for us to minister healing here is the, uh, uh, is the kingdom of God. We belong to God's kingdom as believers. And as part of that kingdom, what God has done is he has given us authority. He has given us the keys of the kingdom of heaven to do here on earth as he has done or declared in heaven. That is our privilege 
it's also our responsibility. In Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 18 and 19, Jesus said, he said, uh, um, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So to the church that he is building, he says this church will overpower the gates of hell, will overthrow the powers of darkness. And he gives us the keys of the kingdom. He gives us the authority of the kingdom to do here on earth what God has willed up in heaven. So that's our responsibility. And because we are part of that kingdom, uh, we, uh, it gives us a strong reason why we must go against every demonic work, which includes sickness and disease and uh, all the oppression that the devil does. The last basis for our ministering healing and deliverance is simply our commission. As believers, we have been commissioned to go and to do it. You know, Jesus commissioned his 10, 12 disciples. He said, as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. This is in Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses 7 and 8. And then he selected another 70 in Luke, the 10th chapter, and he gave them the same commission. He said, I want you to go preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick and cast out devils. And then in the Great Commission, he told his disciples, he said, I want you to go make disciples and teach these new people to do exactly what I have taught you. What did he teach the 12? What did he teach the 70? He taught them to go preach the kingdom of God, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. And that commission is handed down to us for people today that we will go forth and do the same things that the early church did. That's the same commission we carry to preach the kingdom of God, to minister healing and deliverance. On this program, we have used our publication titled Ministering Healing and Deliverance for our study. This book is designed to equip believers to minister healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Write to us to get a free copy of the book or visit our website www.apcwo.org to download this publication and several other resources that will help you in your spiritual journey. Thank you for being part of the program today as we talked about the basis for ministering healing and deliverance. Uh, this entire teaching is available as a free publication that, that you can download from our church website or you can request your own free printed copy by sending us your postal address. There's a lot more in that publication that we are unable to cover uh, on the programs. Uh, on the programs, we just touch on a few topics and give a very quick summary of these things. Uh, but in the book, we, we dwell, uh, delve into a lot more detail, addressing a lot more, a lot more questions and uh, several other areas. So we'd really encourage you to get your free copy and study it uh, uh, so that you can be equipped to minister healing and deliverance to other people who are hurting and suffering. Now, before we close the program, uh, we want to take a moment to pray with you. If you have yourself, you're suffering, or you have a loved one who is sick and hurting, let's pray together. And let's believe God to do miracles as we pray. Let's believe that incurable diseases will be healed, that blood conditions and cancers and, 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 and those who are crippled and those who are uh, afflicted in, in, in different ways will be healed as we pray. Let's believe the power of God will flow right where you are, making people well. So as I pray, as we pray together, let's believe God for healing and for deliverance to take place. Father, we thank you for your power. We thank you that you're present everywhere right now, Lord God. And as people are praying right now, I ask in the mighty name of Jesus for your healing virtue to touch every sick person, that people will be healed and delivered from every sickness and disease afflicting their bodies as they reach out to you in faith right now. Let every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of incurable disease, let every spirit of death be removed from their bodies and let life come in, in the name of Jesus. Let every spirit of cancer go. Let every spirit of paralysis go. Let every spirit of arthritis leave so that people be healed and made whole in the name of Jesus. And Lord, let your healing word to flow through their bodies, making them whole. Let everything that's not supposed to be in their bodies dematerialize and be taken up in the name of Jesus and release workings of miracles, O oh God, to make every person whole. 
and let every yoke of darkness be broken of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I command every demonic work to be broken, every work of the devil to be broken, every burden to be taken off their mind and their bodies and be healed, be set free in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that you're the God who removes every oppression, setting people free in Jesus' name. We give you thanks, Father. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. And it will be our joy to hear from you. So if you take a moment to just send us an email, let us know what God's done in your life, the healing you've experienced, the miracle you've received, so that we could pray and praise God together with you. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way.